Welcome to worship this morning. We're in my brother's living room here in North Carolina, and I am glad that we can bring this um, Sunday before Christmas to you and to our families here in our homes, um, wherever those homes might be. So join us for worship this morning. With all your hearts, glorify the Lord. From, From the, the depths, depths of, of who, who I am, am I rejoice, rejoice in God, God my Savior. Savior. God has looked with favor on the low status of his people, but look, from now on, everyone will consider us highly favored. That's, That's because, because the, the Mighty One, one has done, done great things, things for us. us. Holy is, is his, his name. God shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, all those who honor him as God. God, God has shown strength, strength with his, his arm. He has scattered, scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things. God sent the rich away empty-handed. God has come to the aid of his people, remembering his mercy. God has done it just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and, and to, to Abraham's, Abraham's descendants, descendants forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. In the rush of preparations for holiday celebration, we come to this place to be fed by God. We need the peace, hope, and love and joy that this season represents. We listen again with wonder at the magnificent words of Mary as she proclaims her faithful participation in God's most miraculous gift. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to receive the words and the blessings, to be fed, and then to be those who will share with others as you have shared with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing about um, God's coming, Christ's coming in Bethlehem, once in royal David city. Once in royal David city stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Very loving mother mild, Jesus Christ her little child. He came down from earth, from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, and his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a stall. With the poor, the scorned, the lowly, lived on earth our Savior holy. Jesus is our childhood's pattern, day by day like us he grew. Tears and smiles like us he knew, and he feeleth for our sadness, and he shareth in our gladness. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he has gone. And he leads his children on to the place where he has gone. Join with us, if you will, with our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and love is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of closeness, the nearness of God, even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence. God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Ooh, one second, I gotta change the page. Here we go. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? The angels greet with anthem sweet, the shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ. Today is from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, 
wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Amen. Well, I'm going to do something that's just a little unusual for me, and that is I'm going to read a pastoral prayer. So pray with me. One week left, Lord, just one week. Can we get all the things done that we have set before us? Have all the cards been mailed, the greetings extended, the gatherings coordinated and placed on our calendar for this last rush before the big day? Have we forgotten anything? Have we forgotten anyone? It would be easy to say we have forgotten the reason for the season. That phrase which is imprinted on keychains and coffee mugs and we think that if we post the note that says Jesus is the reason for this season we will truly be fulfilling our Christmas commitment. How silly we are. Placing the words on the wall taped to a bulletin board on a refrigerator does not place the words in our hearts. We replace the glorious story of God's incarnate word with tinsel and wrapping paper and believe that we're ready to celebrate. When will we learn? Come to us now, comforting God with your powerful words of healing. Help us to remember the witness of Mary, a young girl who never expected to play such a role in salvation history. Put the brakes on our rushing and sit us down to hear the story of your absolute love for us. Get us ready. Get us ready for the birth of your Son who will become our Savior. Move us from the focus of our festivities to a focus on witnessing about your love through serving others. Challenge us to reach out to people in need, not only with a check to support a particular endeavor, but with actual contact in ministries of sacrifice and service. In such times as this, remind us that we are called to proclaim your love through witness and service. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament this morning is from Galatians verses, or chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are a child, God has made you also an heir. These are the words of God for the people of God. Well, it's the fourth week of Advent, the four weeks as we await what has already happened, a fresh awareness of God and his son Jesus, that we might live. Jesus Christ, the gift of hope, and we have been examining how Jesus came through the unsuspecting, by and to the unqualified, and entirely unearned. Jesus Christ is a gift, a gift of hope. Have you ever noticed that when a gift shows up at the wrong time and you're not ready for it, or you don't need it, or even want it, it kind of gets set off into a corner or even the back of a closet and you forget about it. And then one day, usually cleaning or maybe reorganizing, and you go and you find it and you think, well, where did that come from? Ever gotten a gift like that? Or maybe it was the look on your face as you unwrapped a gift. It was a dead giveaway to the one that gave it to you and they shrug their shoulders if they're gracious and say, oh, you might need it someday. Or maybe there was a time that you received a gift and you were looking for something and hoping for something else that you really wanted and you were disappointed at what you actually got. And I have to confess that there have been times that that happened with me and I actually let it spoil the whole entire Christmas day, at, at least for me and maybe for other family members. 
Have you ever had a day when you couldn't, or at least didn't, get the gift in the spirit in, in which it was given? Or maybe you missed out on a gift that was delivered to your house or apartment and it was stolen right off your porch. See, for a gift to be just right, it has to be just the right gift at just the right time. And when that happens, your eyes light up, and if not actually spoken, you think, it's just what I always wanted. And sometimes, gifts come in unexpected packages. You might have guessed that the story we've been talking about each week, the best Christmas pageant ever, would bring a very unexpected gift. When we left off our story last week, you could say that with the Herdmans in the play, it felt like they almost took over the whole show. And people might even have been thinking the wrong way about it. A lot of people might have even been hoping or at least expecting something to go horribly, terribly wrong. And they certainly weren't hoping or thinking that the Herdman children would bring a special gift to the whole church that Christmas. Well, the day for the Christmas pageant came, and everyone was in their places except the Herdmans. The music started, they turned the lights down low so that you could see the candles, and it all looked so really, really pretty, and the songs were sung, and it was time. Where were the Herdmans? So the children just sang away in the manger again, and the Herdmans still weren't there, so they kept humming away in the manger. Hum, 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 away in the manger again, and everyone started to think the play was all spoiled. And then the Herdmans opened the door. There was Emma Jean and Ralph. They were supposed to be Mary and Joseph, and they took one step, looked around, and just stared. They had never seen the church all decorated, the candles or the lights on the angels in their costumes, or the manger. And then they slowly walked down to the stage, and Emma Jean was carrying baby Jesus over her shoulder and burping him all the way down the aisle. A few people chuckled, and they thought, baby Jesus would never burp. But maybe Emma Jean got something that the people didn't. Baby Jesus really was a real baby. He got hungry, he cried, he burped, and he even had his diaper changed. And then came Gladys, the herald angel. She didn't just say, unto you is born this day. Nope, she shouted it out. Hey, everybody, unto us is born this day. It's a savior, and his name is Jesus. That's really great news. That's Gladys. And then the shepherds came. And of course, all the herdmans looked different than everybody else. They weren't all clean with their hair neatly in place like all the other children. Nope, they looked like, well, like shepherds. Like they just got there from a long, dusty, dirty trip. Like they had been working in the barn where Jesus was born. And last of all were the wise men, Ollie and Claude. And what do you think they were carrying? Do you think they were carrying fancy jars and packages that were made up for the play? No. They were carrying a big ham. Can you believe it? They didn't bring those fancy packages of frankincense and myrrh, well, usually actually bath salts. But no, they brought a ham. But you know what? That ham came from their very own kitchen. And you know where they got it? For their house, it came from the food pantry, and they would know that they weren't going to get another ham. They gave what was actually really precious to them. And then everyone saw it. Emma Jean Herdman was standing by the manger with tears streaming down her face. And she didn't even get to wipe the tears away. All at once, Emma Jean got it. It came on Emma Jean like a ton of bricks that the baby Jesus, a savior, was born for her that day. And even some of the grown-ups got to see what Christmas was all about that day. Emma Jean and the rest of the Hermans 
gave their very best from their very own belongings because they were so grateful and thankful that Jesus came for us. Let me read just a little part of the very ending of that story. Everyone had been waiting all the time for the Herdmans to do something absolutely unexpected. And sure enough, that's what happened. Emma Jean Herdman was crying. In the candlelight, her face was all shiny with tears, and she didn't even bother to wipe them away. She just sat there, awful old Emma Jean in her crookedy veil, crying and crying and crying. Well, it was the best Christmas pageant we ever had. Everybody said so, but nobody seemed to know why. When it was over, people stood about the lobby of the church talking about what was different this year. There was something special. Everyone said so. They couldn't put their finger on what. Old Mrs. Wendelkin said, well, Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a black eye. That was something special. But only what you might expect, she added. And she meant that it would be the most natural thing in the world for a herdman to have a black eye. But actually, nobody hit Emma Jean, and she didn't hit anyone else. Her eye wasn't really black either. It was just all puffy and swollen. She had walked into the corner of the choir robe cabinet in a daze, as if she had just caught on to the idea of God and the wonder of Christmas. And this was the funny thing about it all. For years, I thought about the wonder of Christmas and the mystery of Jesus' birth and never really understood it. But now, because of the Herdmans, it didn't seem so mysterious after all. So, the Christmas story came to the Herdmans at just the right time. They got it. And so did a lot of the grown-ups. Some just could look and see how the Herdman children were the ones who really, really understood what Jesus was all about. But there were other grown-ups that would stay, that they were looking the other way. That's what we might say. They were expecting and they were wanting everything to be just the way it's always been. They didn't know that they needed Jesus the way even the Herdman children knew they needed Jesus. See, Jesus came at just the right time. And that takes us right back to our passage from the New Testament. It's how the Apostle Paul said it about when Jesus came. It was Galatians 4, chapter 4, verse 4. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. And because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. The fullness of time. The set time had fully come. In other words, it was at just the right time. What made it just the right time? Well, we can think it's just a spiritual saying that it really didn't matter when Jesus came, but it fit the story. But it did. I want to tell you a little about this, not just the history lesson, but to open up the wonder and amazing grace of how God chose that time. See, first, there was one language used all around the world. It was Greek. And that happened because 300 years earlier, Alexander the Great had conquered the world. But by the time Jesus was born and the Roman Empire surrounded the world, Greek had become the language that most everybody spoke. The world and the word could know about Jesus because they all spoke the same language. Second, there was the Roman law that was around the world because of that Roman Empire. Because it was one law, there could be a census and there would be the legal process to take Jesus to the cross. There was the legal process that even the Apostle Paul used to appeal his case and get taken to Rome, which caused the spread of the gospel and the news from all around the world. And then there were the Roman roads 
built to make the Roman trade possible around the empire faster and easier, but it also made the spreading of the good news of Jesus faster and better and easier all around the world. Fourth is the Roman peace. Yes, it was a brutal peace put down by a brutal army, but the fact was that the early Christian faith was born at a time of peace, and that gave it time to expand around the empire, the Roman Empire, without fear of invading armies that would make it too dangerous to travel. You see, there's another factor, and that was that the pagan world at the time of Jesus' birth was philosophically and religiously exhausted. People were tired and realizing that the pagan gods really don't care about the human race. Much like there is a spiritual hunger even on our younger generations today, learning that materialism just doesn't work. And then the Jewish people longed for the coming of their Messiah. And then lastly, the Roman world needed a census. You know, here in this country, we have a census every 10 years to know how to allocate resources and things like that. And the same was true for the Roman Empire. They needed a census. Now, ordering the census may not have been the most important thing that Caesar Augustus did that day, but it did set in motion a series of events that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, the city of David, where the Messiah would be born as it was spoken in the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Caesar didn't know he was actually the tool of God, <laughs> working on just another day of activities, but ultimately he was fulfilling an ancient prophecy from God's word. So you see, like a gift we receive that makes us go, it's just what I always wanted. A gift we were looking for, a gift that meets a need, fills a gap, and a gift that is timed just right. Jesus was born in Bethlehem all those years ago at just the right time. So why was he born? As Paul said, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Remember, sonship is, is a big thing because there in the Middle East, there, same as it is now, only sons could inherit. And now we're all made sons who can inherit. Because you are his sons, both men and women are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts and the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, Daddy, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. Heir. So if I'm an heir, what am I inheriting? Well, that's a big discussion for another time, but for today, let's just say that as an heir of God, it's pretty terrific and definitely includes abundant, joyful, purpose-filled living and life, even in the midst of difficult and trying times. It means life in the new heaven and new earth, the life promised to Abraham and fulfilled through, church, through Jesus, life eternal, everlasting with him and in his presence. So here's the question. In what way is Jesus, the gift of hope, the gift given at just the right time for you? The Herdman children in the best Christmas pageant ever walked into church that day, unsuspecting that there would be anything there for them but free snacks. And they received a gift of grace. Zachariah and Elizabeth never suspected that they would be the parents of a man who would pave the way for the coming Messiah, John the Baptist. The Herdman children knew nothing of the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus. How could, the play, how could they play the parts in the Christmas play? They weren't qualified. They never knew. 
they never knew who the parts were that they were playing and they came to a deeper appreciation of God's gift of Jesus even in the people who heard the story hundreds of times. See, Mary and Joseph were also young, common laborers. They weren't qualified to be the parents that would raise the baby born who would be our savior, but God chose them. The herdmen children had not earned the right to be in the play. In fact, they bullied their way in and the shepherds weren't qualified to be the ones carrying the good news, but they did. It all happened and came together at just the right time in each of their lives to bring the good news of Jesus Christ that saves and changes lives for the better. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. And this message, knowing that Christ was given to be one of us, to be God with us, to rejoin heaven and earth just brightens your day, to light up a new awareness of this gift, and, and you sing out praise to God and thank God. Or maybe you've been kind of an observer for a long time, kind of like holding a package still wrapped up, waiting to be opened. You've been getting hints for years and years of what's inside, but the package that is the gift of God's love has been left unopened or at least unused. Maybe it's the gift of forgiveness. Maybe you've held on to something that to you is unforgivable. God might forgive me, but I can't forgive myself. Something in your past, that's the very thing that Jesus came for. Or maybe it's a grudge of unforgiveness that you're holding on to that keeps you from joyful living. And God opens up for you a forgiving, gracious heart. That's God's gracious gift at just the right time for you. Maybe it's the power of the Holy Spirit to transform your life from the inside out and you keep Jesus in a closet that you bring out in times of need. But the gift that he brings to you this day is to be in all of your life. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You, God, teach me the way of life in your presence is total, total celebration. And beautiful things are always in your right hand. Maybe, maybe that sense of total celebration in God's presence is the gift that it's just for you at just the right time today. Or maybe it is the first time that you've come to a full awareness of the saving grace of God through Jesus Christ because it's just the right time. An awareness that you need a savior and you open the gift of God's grace for the first time. Open this gift. It's simply to say yes and then tell somebody about it. That is the gift of hope at just the right time. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful and grateful that you gave us Jesus Christ, your only Son for us. Thank you for this season that we come to each and every year to remember, to await your coming that of course have already happened. And we take it as a reminder Oh, that you would come into our lives in a new and a fresh way as you come as the gift of hope at a time when we so need hope. Oh, Lord, and that we sit here and await, await your coming again when heaven and earth would once again be one. Heaven, that place where you are, is joined here with us on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. O oh Lord, open our hearts to you this day. But I guess that's what we need to do. Lord, our hearts are open. Oh, come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Come into our hearts.
this day. So it is getting awfully close to Christmas, and Christmas Eve is just a few days away this coming Thursday, and so we got to sing a Christmas song, a really Christmassy song, like Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the newborn King, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful are ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by thanksgiving for what God has done through us for the gift that he gives us in Jesus Christ come this Advent season let's pray Father for all that you have given to us especially your son Jesus we give back to you just a portion just a hint of what you've given to us in thanksgiving that you might use it to your honor and glory. Take them, use them, use us, we are yours. For it's in Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. Let's celebrate with the doxology. Praise, Praise God, God from whom all blessings, blessings flow. flow. Praise, Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Father Son, and, and Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now, hear this blessing from me. May God our Father, Christ our brother and Savior and the Holy Spirit guide you, guard you, direct you and keep you in these coming days ahead as we eagerly await and anticipate the coming of our Savior Jesus. Already come, yet to come, and even with us now. Amen. Amen. And go tell about it. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the